Oh, crap. Okay, so um, every once in a while, Dangerous Prototypes sends out a free um, PCB. And so I got a free Bus Pirate PCB and used the bill of materials that they have to order up the uh, componentry that goes on it. It's an FTDI chip. It's a PIC24 microcontroller, um, a, th a couple of 3.3 and a 5-volt voltage regulator, some LEDs across the top on the, f on the top and the bottom of the board, and then, of course, it's um, um, switches, uh, bilateral switches. So you can do voltage, uh, voltage shifting, either 3.3 um, or 5 volts. And I tried using lead-free solder on putting this together. Um, it was m much better than I expected it to be. You do have to crank up the heat just a little bit higher. Now, there are a few things to point out about how to bring the, the board up. Um, you do have to um, install MP Lab uh, in order to program the PIC chip. Uh, so MP Lab X, you have to download um, a, a C compiler for it. Um, XC16 is their proprietary compiler. They will give you a demo license for the pro optimizing version. Um, the free version doesn't do any optimizations. You also need a programmer to program the pick. And um, back from when I built the uh, the uh, Matchbox oscilloscope, I got myself a pick kit um, three clone programmer for programming uh, the pick microcontroller that went into that. So we can. So I had to um, stretch back into my memory banks and was able to um, do the programming and get the board brought up. So. That's what this video is. I'm going to talk a bit about how to uh, talk a bit about how to um, what you need to do in order to um, get the pick kit um, configured and programming your board and all of that, so that um, somebody can walk through it pretty quickly. Because I had to dig around um, in a few places to get information, but uh, so I wanted to summarize it here. Yeah. So uh, let's get started. To get software that you need to build in order to burn onto the uh, Bus Pirate, there's a community-run project that is developing the firmware for the Bus Pirate version 3 and version 4. First thing that we need to do is we need to um, get that software, and basically it's just a simple um, clone of a uh, GitHub project, or you can download a zip file and unzip it. Either way works. Once you've downloaded that software and unzipped it onto your computer, there are two things that you need. You need to burn a bootloader onto it. And I burned the version 4 bootloader onto it. And then that is basically loading this MP Lab X project. And the other thing that you need to do is you actually have to burn some firmware onto it. And then that is going into the firmware's directory and then loading up this um, project. And I'll show you how you um, how you go about doing that. So essentially, it's just open a, a project and then browse to wherever you put that firmware, and then load the .x uh, file, and that's what will load your project into MPLAB X. And then it's a simple matter of doing a clean and build. So to clean and build the bootloader. You just click the Clean and Build tool. It will build your bootloader. Switch over to the actual Bus Pirate firmware, and then Clean and Build that, and that will get you your firmwares that you need to order in order to burn onto your onto your Bus Pirate. Next step, now that we've got our uh, firmware built, is to burn it onto our microprocessor. And in order to do that, we need to run a program called MPLAB XIPE, Integrated Programming Environment. And to do that, it is launching that, uh, launching a new piece of software. Now, the MPLAB XIPE um, starts out looking like this. I would recommend that before you launch this software, that you have your PIC kit ins installed um, and plugged in, and you have your device plugged into the Bus Pirate plugged into your PIC kit 3. And we need to do a bit of configuration here. So, um, and some of that configuration involves something called advanced mode. And advanced mode requires a password 
um, that is given right here. Microchip. And then it launches on another screen on a different size for some reason. So anyways, let's bring this back here and we'll take a look at what needs to be configured. In order to program it, we have to deliver um, power to our circuit from the tool, as I mentioned earlier. We also have to choose which microcontroller we are using. And in order to filter that list down, they give you uh, a nice little drop down. We've got a PIC24 FJ64 GA1002, uh, which is what we've got on there. And then, so you've told it what <clears throat> device you're going to be programming, and then you can connect to your um, Picket 3, your Picket 3 for programming. It will tell us what type of firmware we're burning, and then oh, target device is not found. Sometimes it does this. And I'm not 100% sure what the big deal is. Last time I had to do it a few times before it would actually connect. Uh, did I uh, VDD, reset voltage, 3.25, power target circuit from tool. There we go. So, sometimes it doesn't turn the power on, sometimes it does. Do it a couple of times and you should be able to connect it. So what you're looking for is to make sure that you can find your device at the target voltage. Now we have to choose a hex file and we just browse to where those are stored. Now um, remember when we were um, in MPLAB X we had this um, uh, this bootloader project that we were in Inside of that bootloader project is a dist directory with a default production hex file that we open up. And now we just need to, now we've loaded it, now we need to burn it onto our microcontroller. Device erase, programming, programming verify complete, programming complete. Once we've burned our bootloader on, then we can burn our firmware on. Bus Pirate Firmware, Bus Pirate X, Dist, version 3, production, production hacks. Open that, program that onto the device. And that should give us the same sort of thing. Programming, following areas will be erased. It's configuring the device. And programming complete. And there we have it. We have um, a, a, a Bus Pirate with the hex files that we want installed. Next step is to connect to it and do a self-test. And that's what we'll look at next. Okay, to connect to our bus pirate, I use something called Minicom. Now you need to figure out what um, serial port is uh, your bus pirate's connected to. I uh, use that using DMessage or LSUSB, either one of those. Um, and then you want to have it configured for that U U USB port. 115-200 um, uh, um, bit per section, seconds, 8 parity bits, or 8 bits, no parity, one stop bit, um, no hardware flow control and no software flow, con flow control. And then you can um, exit the setup. And so hit enter a couple of times and you should see a high Z and then you um, can type a question mark and it should print out a bunch of um, commands that you can, you can do. There is something called the self-test. So you just enter a tilde and it will say connect disconnect any devices, then connect five, a VPU to plus 5 volts and ADC to plus 3.3 .3 volts. So um, plus 3 volts is the second pin down on the left hand side and VP, 
V is the pin just below it. And then right above on the other side, um, you've got 3.3 um, and ADC. So it's the topmost, top rightmost two pins. So two pins right at the top there, and then offset one row down. It's those pins, and that's what you need to do. You, that's what you need to um, jumper in order to run the self-test. Then you hit the self-test and see what, uh, what you get. Okay, so once you've got those connected, hit space. Uh, I must have timed out. Uh, so, tilde. Yeah, timed out. So, uh, looks like everything is okay, unless our mode and V-Reg LEDs are not on, but... Sure enough. And there we have it. Found zero errors. Looks like we have a working bus pirate. When you're ordering parts for this thing, do not do what I did and order the wrong footprint of a component. Because um, <laughs> that just is frustrating as hell. And what you end up doing is you have to um, put in an order to your your parts distributor, distributor for one IC. And then that means, well, I can't really do that. I have to add a few more things onto my order and blah, blah, blah. But anyways, yeah, live and learn. But uh, yeah, it's been a fun little project and I now have a useful tool for um, interrogating buses. And I would uh, recommend anybody who wants to um, practice their surface mount soldering skills to try and get their hands on one of these little um, circuit boards and uh, build one up themselves. At the worst case, you get some experience programming PIC microcontrollers and you get some experience doing some surface mount soldering. As always, thanks a lot for watching and we'll talk to you later. Bye for now.